five dumb things I've done. I did a video about the Behringer SF300 fuzz pedal where I compared it to my old Big Muffs and just, you know, had fun. And uh, the point was to see just what it sounded like in comparison, not to try and make it sound like a Big Muff and whatever. But anyway, so I love the pedal. I, I'm like, it's totally worth $25. It's insane. And then I sold it like an idiot. Then to make it worse... Josh from JHS Pedals has a great YouTube show called The JHS Show, and he does a feature on how great Behringer pedals can be. This pedal is on the show. Prices skyrocket. I tried last summer. I'm like, well, screw it. I'm just going to have to buy another one. So I try and order it from Sweetwater, and it's on back order for 90 days, and then they cancel my order and say, sorry, we can't get it. God. You know that guy that's always walking around with a cracked phone? Mm -hmm. The guy at the mall that fixes phone screens, um, he has me, I have like a discount card now. Like punt, get 10 punches and get one free. I, one flew out of my pocket on a roller coaster. Uh, I had one, the worst one was uh, I had it in my, I forgot my headphones, so I put it in my hood. I'm walking my dog home from the studio late at night, raining falls out cracks and i'm like ah it doesn't matter i bought a screen protector it's just a screen protector i get home realize i bought this screen protector i didn't put the screen protector on um there's also a macbook with coffee involving like crackles and fizz and smoke and the macbook not working anymore i don't want to talk about that either my main point here being stitch in time saves nine you know, take the extra second to do the thing right. Be safe. Roll up your cables. Put your expensive mics away. You know, whatever it is. There's a hundred ways that you can trip and fall and break something that you just don't need to waste that money on. I could have bought a really, really, a, a mic that I could have kept for the rest of my life with the amount of money I've given to the guy at the mall who repairs iPhone screens. And that's all I want to say about it. This one starts awesome. Walking into the thrift shop, they know me. They call me when they get cool stuff. There's just not a lot of people up here that appreciate the kind of stuff that I appreciate. Um, so they call me. I come and give them, I don't know, it was, I think it was 75 bucks for a fully working Leslie Type 147 speaker cabinet, you know, if you know what that is. Look it up. So, anyways. I have it for a year or two, realize it's too friggin' big, and I have a really good amp guy up here, and I said, hey, can we turn that tube amp that powers the speaker into a um, guitar amp? He says, yes. So he does it, and it's really, really neat. And I use it for a couple years. And one day, I, I don't know if I'm lazy, I just, I was distracted. And I plug, I swap the speaker cable and the instrument cable in the wrong sockets long enough that I start to smell a kind of a warm hot smell and I'm like nah I, I, I don't really smell that you made me blow up an amplifier. and then it became obvious I did smell it and then it didn't work anymore because I'm a dumbass next we have my Maxon 8999 which is a really awesome expensive analog delay pedal and I got it last summer and it immediately replaced uh, anything else I had been using. I have a memory man that I've owned for, I mean it's way older than my kid and uh, I love it but it's just so noisy and this thing, it's, it's, a, it's different but it just, it replaced it. Just awesome. Okay, I'm, forget it. I'm getting sidetracked. That, what I'm really doing is avoiding telling you what I did. So the other day I'm in the studio and I'm kind of trying to multitask. I'm doing a bunch of stuff and uh, I'm looking, I've been looking down at my pedals and it's been a mess and I've been kind of rewiring and setting it up a different way. And I thought, well, let me, let me work on that. So I go down and here's the Maxon sitting there and here's the adapter like two inches from it. And I'm like, okay, let me hook these up, blah, 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 hook them all up. Well, long story short, that wasn't the Maxon's adapter. That was the 
memory man's adapter, which is significantly higher voltage, which I sent through the Maxon. I found out because I plugged it in and to the right one, and it didn't work. Doesn't light up, just dead. So, you know, yeah, here's a theme now, I believe I've established. Um, and yet again, it sets on my needs to be fixed shelf, which should just be called edited for content. You can't break an SM57. I mean, everybody knows that. You can take it and you can pound, you can use that as a hammer. Drop it on the floor, pick it up, throw it around, put it on the end of your cable, whip it around, hit somebody in the head with it, bring it back in, say something cool, walk off stage, right? Still works. You know, the last time I picked up an SM57, I dropped it from about knee high on a carpet. Picked it up, laughed, said, ah, it's an SM57. Well, guess what? That SM57 doesn't work anymore. Well, that was a little more painful than I thought it was going to be. Thanks for sticking around. Um, more episodes coming soon, hopefully every week. And uh, I've got a big microphone. It's not a shootout. It's a comparison. It's going to be really cool. It was. It's very elaborate. Um, and as long as I don't break something before I finish it, You'll, you'll see it sooner rather than later. Thank you very much.